the 2005 trial must have been one of the most difficult and unique cases to have worked on. How did you both come about becoming Michael's representatives? I had known Randy Jackson for many years. We used to get together socially uh, every once in a while. And when his brother was in trouble, uh, he called and asked if uh, we would represent Michael. At first we couldn't because we were involved in another high-profile homicide case. But eventually uh, we had a falling out with that client and then uh, Randy called again, said, uh, are you both free? We, we, we want you to defend uh, Michael Jackson. And uh, one thing led to another. Um, How has working with Michael affected you from both a personal and career aspect? Um, oh, it, 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 no question changed my career. Without a question, uh, people, uh, I think, uh, no question identify you with Michael for, because uh, he was such a big name, more so than any other case. I'm, we have uh, handled other high-profile clients, but people are not really interested in hearing about those cases. They're more interested in hearing about Michael, even though it was five, six years ago. So it's uh, no question it really uh, had a big impact on my career. And Tom, um, I remember you mentioning in the documentary that the media often portrayed um, negative elements and completely dis disregarded the positive factors that you were displaying. How frustrating was that and how did you deal with all the media attention? The way to deal with the media during that trial was to basically shut them out. Um, my view of the media was somewhere between suspicion and contempt. Uh, I focused and we focused on 13 people, the judge and 12 jurors. They were the most important people in that case. Uh, Basically, we, uh, we lived like hermits. We uh, you know, had our compound with our staff and all of our uh, evidence. We had one um, war room, we called it, with about 4,000 binders of documents. And all we did was focus on the evidence in the courtroom. We pretty much ignored the media. Um, so for five months, I understand that you were working with Michael for 12 hours a day, five days a week. Um, how, what was it like working with him um, through such an intense time? was one of the easiest clients to represent, the easiest. Um, most people in that kind of situation, most uh, criminal uh, defendants, uh, behave a little bit differently. But Michael was very, very easy in that, uh, not, not controlling, um, got, had com complete confidence in his lawyers, in us, and uh, uh, wanted to uh, just uh, hang on to his faith. Um, and what are your thoughts on the current trial surrounding Michael's death? The Conrad Murray trial? Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really followed it uh, on a daily basis for, for, from what I've heard and seen and little. I think that the prosecution is presenting a very good case and I think that Dr. Murray should get convicted because uh, what he did was uh, uh, completely unacceptable and he's guilty. Mm. And Tom, I know that you previously claimed that when um, Dr. Conrad Murray gave Michael Jackson the propofol, you know, he violated every ethical obligation he had as his doctor. Um, do you still stand by that? Yes, I've been following the case closely and commenting on it a lot. Uh, I think what he did was completely unacceptable, unprofessional, and illegal. Uh, he may have been a fine doctor for other patients, but when he met Michael Jackson, he threw all of his ethical concerns out the window. He got carried away with being Michael Jackson's physician. He did things that were completely unacceptable, and he cost Michael Jackson his life. And I think he should be convicted as well. Yeah. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you.